it would be safe to say we were surprised at how popular this video series on our geothermal or earth battery greenhouse has been and how many people have commented and asked questions on the videos in that series. Uh, really, uh, for us, it was just documenting another project on our farm and uh, we just really didn't expect how, uh, well, how many views this would get. And uh, I guess there's a lot of people really interested in earth battery systems and uh, geothermal greenhouses. So we thought we'd come out today and answer what we think are the top five most frequently asked questions in this video series. Question number one, how much did it cost? Well, that one's pretty simple because kept a pretty detailed log of all our expenses on a spreadsheet and the total cost for the greenhouse. Well, let me back up on that. Uh, one thing I need to say is, is that we bought the farm four years ago and the previous owners put in a greenhouse in that same location. So they ran the infrastructure for the greenhouse, the irrigation pipes, water supplying it, as well as a 60 amp electrical service. They also left the pipes in the ground, so, but they just did a simple hoop house, uh, did not do obviously something this elaborate. So all of those costs, so the cost for irrigation and electrical, those were not costs that we had to incur, so you have to leave those out. And we did all of the labor ourselves, digging the earth battery, uh, building the end walls, putting up the pipes, bending them, everything. We did all that ourselves, so all the labor you have to take out of it. So the total cost of just materials to build the earth battery system and the greenhouse was $3,900. That does not include the electrical, the lighting that we have since put into the greenhouse and the shade cloth, 40% shade cloth that we ordered and put on top of the greenhouse. So that doesn't include that. So just the greenhouse itself was $3,900. But if you've followed this series or watched all the videos, you'd know that our son received or was awarded a $1,000 grant from the Future Farmers of America for a SAE project, a supervised agriculture experience project through California Certified Organic Farmers. That's who awarded him the grant. So that thousand dollars, a butterfly flying around me, that thousand dollars went toward the greenhouse completion and purchasing and starting vegetable starts as part of his project. So the total cost to us uh, at the end of the day to build the greenhouse was $2,900. Second question, aren't the pipes going to fill up with water? No, short answer. Uh, our water table is about 20 feet down. Now we did initially have the problem that this whole area was flat and it's sand, about six inches of sand sitting on top of red clay. And that's pretty much impervious red clay. So when it rains hard initially with the greenhouse especially, the water was working its way back under the plastic and would go over to the undisturbed or the disturbed soil that we had going down where we had dug for the earth battery. And obviously that water quickly went down and filled up the irrigation pipes or the drain pipes in the earth battery system. Uh, once or twice and we just used a pump to empty those out. As you can see in this video, we addressed that by regrading uh, around the greenhouse and putting in drain lines to get the water moved away from the greenhouse very quickly when it rains. And since then we have had no issue with water getting into the greenhouse or the pipes filling up. In fact, we're having quite the opposite problem with the combination of the heat uh, and having to leave the doors open and run fans in there that it has become more like a desert and it is very, very dry in there. So much so that that is becoming a problem uh, in that uh, we just can't keep humidity in the greenhouse, which affects the earth battery system. It's not quite as efficient because you don't have moisture. We don't have evaporative cooling because there's there's almost no humidity in the greenhouse. And we tested this actually just to see if we could get cooler air coming back out of the pipes by spraying water down into the returns for about five minutes and then just letting the air blow back over that water. 
and you could feel the difference in the exhaust temperature, how much colder it was with water down in there. So the answer really is the pipes are not going to fill up with water. Even when we go in and water several times a day, that is a token amount of water going down into the top of the greenhouse and really not an issue that it's gonna work all the way down to two feet and certainly not down to four feet, so no. The earth battery system for us is not going to fill up with water. Maybe this will be an issue in the fall and winter and spring, but so far for us, that has not been an issue. Question number three, isn't mold and mildew going to grow in the pipes? Well, a lot of people have been pretty concerned about that. And I think too, just from a, I guess, a health standpoint of going in the greenhouse and, and breathing the air. Well, again, uh, even when we were using the system before it got really hot, when it was still cold and there was humidity in there, it would become so dry even then that I just don't think that this will be an issue. It's certainly not an issue now uh, in the summer. Again, as I just said, because it's so dry, I guess we'll see when fall, winter, and spring comes, and we'll certainly do updates on the greenhouse when we get into the fall and winter but uh, I just have a hard time seeing that much mold and mildew growing in there because the air is constantly moving. And point of fact, it's just, uh, it's, it's honestly hard to keep it humid in the greenhouse. Number four, won't dirt go into the perforated pipes since we didn't put socks on them or drain socks, sleeves as people use when we put in an irrigation system. Well, the point of those often is because in those cir circumstances, in those uses, they're being used as drain pipes. So water with sediment is flowing into the pipes. That obviously is not our circumstance. We do not have water flowing into the pipes on a regular basis. And because the fans are on the inlet side pushing air in, there is positive pressure in the earth battery system so much so and because it has gotten so dry in there at least from the two foot layer up the ground has cracked the red clay cracked where we backfilled it and put it in it has found there's sort of fissures as it dried out and the the earth shrunk and opened up a little bit to the point that we have air blowing out of cracks and tiny holes in the greenhouse floor it's actually kind of neat because you can find little holes in there where you see air blowing out and if you take dust or sand and pile it over there it'll blow there's enough pressure coming out of those cracks to blow dirt back out of the way so that was something we didn't really anticipate was that air would not only come out of those returns but work its way back up through the soil uh, two feet at least two feet up and it might be coming up from the four foot layer uh, I don't know. So uh, I do not think that we're going to get really uh, any dirt going into those pipes in the way that I think people are worried about because maybe in their mind they're thinking about irrigation drain pipes with water flowing into them and carrying sediment and leaving it in the pipes. Number five, does the system keep the greenhouse cool in the summer? No way. Uh, it is the, the, the passive solar gain in that greenhouse. Again, 48 feet by 16 feet. If you think about that as a receptor for, for heat from the sun, and then the fact that we have six inch fans pulling air in, the system just can't keep up with that much heat, how intense it is. I mean, first off, the ambient temperature is already on a day like today, 96 degrees plus. Uh, and then add in the sun. When we did add the 40% shade cloth, that made a huge difference, uh, truthfully. Uh, I mean, it seemed that there was almost no limit to how hot it got in the days just before we got the shade cloth, but the shade cloth helps to keep it roughly between about 100, somewhere between 100 and let's say 112, 115 degrees tops in the greenhouse on the hottest days so far. And that's with fans running in the doors uh, open and the earth battery system running as well. Uh, without it, it would be just, it would be way too hot. But the reality is that the system is just too small to turn over the volume of air in that greenhouse with the doors closed. Now, maybe if we had giant fans that were moving the volume of air in the greenhouse 
20 or more, more times an hour? It, it might, I don't know. Uh, but what I can tell you is someone in one of the videos, uh, someone a lot uh, smarter than me with math and thermodynamics ran the calculations and figured based on the outlet speeds and temperatures that we were getting uh, probably a turnover rate of just under five times an hour. And in the summer, there, there's just no way that that offsets the, the passive solar heat gain in this greenhouse. So no, uh, it will not cool it down in the greenhouse. Uh, now I can say this consistently, the outlet temperature is 30 to 40 degrees lower than the inlet temperature. So the Earth's battery system is working as a heat exchanger. That's there, there's just no question about that. It's not that air is going in at one temperature and coming back out the same temperature and it's doing nothing. It absolutely works. Whether it can be scaled up enough to cool down a greenhouse in the summer, that I don't know, uh, at least not from personal experience. But we do have real hope uh, and we know from some experience that in the winter, in the fall, winter, and spring, it should be able to keep the temperature in the greenhouse at night from dropping below freezing uh, at a very efficient cost, the cost of basically two light bulbs running, which is what those fans are operating at. So that means we should be able to grow cool season crops all winter long, fall, winter, and spring without the need for additional heating sources in the greenhouse. And we're gonna be able to grow tomatoes and peppers all year long, but cool season crops, absolutely. So the earth battery system does work, just not as a refrigerant or coolant, like an air conditioning system for the greenhouse itself during the summer. Well, that's it. That was what we believe or think was the top five most frequently asked questions about our geothermal greenhouse with an earth battery system. Uh, certainly people can ask more questions in this video if you would like to and we'll try to answer them and say this we're really really happy with the greenhouse it turned out great uh, I, I mean for our purposes I think it's gonna work extremely well and we'll just say that uh, we'll continue to update about the greenhouse we probably won't do anything for a while uh, but we'll come back to it this fall and this winter especially as we get into some freezing weather and see how the system is working then and uh, and what it's doing so if you want to follow those videos hit the subscribe button or the, the little bell to get the updates when we upload videos and then you'll know when we've uh, put up a new video about the greenhouse at some point if you're interested in learning what it does in the middle of winter all right, well, until the next video from here at St. Isidore's Farm, I hope everybody is well, enjoying summer, and getting ready to enjoy a blessed Independence Day coming up on the 4th. Until then, take care, and God bless.